So hello students, we'll continue again with unit number two and topic number five, which is networks, preparation of CPM networks, and activity of link and node. So network, type of precedence relationships, a strategy for scheduling activities in a project plan, a precedence diagramming method that is PDM is a strategy for developing a project schedule network diagram that utilizes nodes to represent activities and associates them with projectiles that illustrate the dependencies. This method is likewise called the activity on node that is AON. So this is figure uh, your precedence relationship. That is, you start from the left, A, B, C, D, E, and you finish on the right. From the left to the right, on the left side you have to write the low the lowest level of the work starting and finish that will be I think on the D E. E is the last node. On E you have to write the final outcome of the project that is finished. So the most significant advantage of using the precedence diagramming method PDM is that it quickly allows the project team to understand all the program the schedule activities and it affiliates and coordinates with each other. From A E, that is we have to run it from left to right from A to E at first A will be the lowest level and likewise you have to write it down or you have to note down your work this how you will know that which is the lowest and which is the highest level this thing you have to deduct it or take it down from the work breakdown structure which you have to make it or plan it first. After that, after making the work breakdown structure, then only you can go for the precedence diagramming method. So as a project manager, ensure that your emphasis is on project sequence as you put effort on the activities. You may have come across additional tasks that have to be performed and henceforth you can incorporate the equivalent in the precedence diagram and to work breakdown structure. So at last draw the balls between the assignments that connect up and ensure that they aren't, there aren't any tasks sitting isolated or being left out. As you can see here in this precedence relationship, the start, from the start, you can see on the left is the clear side. First step is you have to clear side. You have to dig trenches and you have to lay foundation. And while doing the clear side and dig trenches, simultaneously what you have to do, you can buy bricks. You have to prepare the bricks and then you have to prepare the cement. So after laying the foundation, as you can see, you can go and prepare the cement in both ways you can do. After preparing bricks also, you can prepare cement. After laying the foundation also, you can prepare your cement. Cement comes in between. So when, after preparing cement, you go to lay the bricks and that is the end. So this is an example of precedence, how a precedence relationship is done. The types of precedence diagramming matter relationship. The significant output in the sequence activities process is the network diagram amidst the sequence activities process. The activities that are explained in the defined activities process is sequence of specific activities that rely upon each other. While the network diagram shows the project activities and presents the interrelationships of activities, the precedence diagram method PDM is the most widely recognized strategy to draw a network diagram. So it is normal for certain affiliates and dependencies between the activities and precedence diagramming method. With the PDM method, four types of relationships are used in the activities to complete the network diagram of a project and they are here you can see start to start, start to finish, finish to start, and finish to finish. So these are the types of precedence diagramming method relationships. First one, finish to start, that is F to S. It's the most common dependency type used between activities. Activity can't begin, begin before a predecessor activity completes. Before the earlier activity completes, you can't start a new activity. So at that point, a finish to start dependency needs to be present between these two exercises. Next, start to start, that is S to S. S to S is a kind of dependency shows that two activities determine to start together. They start parallelly. Finish to finish, F to F. In a project, illustrates the two activities in a project determine to finish together. That is, two activities in a project, they finish with together. That is, they finish parallelly. Next, start to finish, S and F is a unique type of dependency on projects. It can be utilized instantly along with the supply chain materials, for instance. In this type of dependency, activity B can finish only after activity A starts. 
Preparation of CPM uh, network. So project scheduling by part of CPM consists of four main steps. Number one, planning. In underneath planning, the planning phase is started by split, splitting the total project into small projects. The smaller projects in turn are divided into activities and are analyzed by the department or section. Relationship of each activity with respect to other activities are defined and established and the corresponding responsibilities and the authority are also stated. Thus, the possibility of overlooking any task necessary for the completion of the project is reduced substantially. Through scheduling, that is planning, the ultimate objective of the planning phase is to prepare a time chart showing the start and finish times for each activity, as we mentioned earlier, as well as its relationship to other activities of the project. This also we have mentioned it earlier, explained to you earlier. So moreover, the schedule must pinpoint the critical part activities which require special attention if the project is to be completed in time. For non-critical activities, the schedule must show the amount of slack or float times which can be used advantage, advantageously when such activities are delayed or when limited resources are to be utilized effectively. Three, allocation of resources. Allocation of resources is performed to achieve the desired objective. A resource is a physical variable such as labor, finance, equipment, and space which will impose the limitation on the time of the project. So when resources are limited and conflicting with each other, demands are made for the same type of resources and a systematic method for allocation of resources becomes essential. Number three, resource allocation usually incurs a compromise and the choice of this compromise depends on the judgment of the managers. Or controlling. The final phase in project management is controlling. Critical part methods facilitate the application of the principle of management by expectation to identify areas that are critical to the completion of the project. By having progress reports from time to time and updating the network continuously, a better financial as well as technical control over the project is exercised. A road diagrams and time charts are used for making periodic progress reports. If required, a new course of action is determined for the remaining portion of the project. Next topic, activity on link and activity on node representation. The first one, activity. An individual operation which utilizes resources and has an end and a beginning is called activity. An arrow is commonly used to represent an activity with its head indicating the direction of progress in the project. These are classified into four categories, predecessor activity, successor activity, concurrent activity. And the fourth one is in the next slide. So the first one is predecessor activity. Activities that must be completed immediately prior to the start of another activity are called predecessor activities. Second, successor activity. Activities that cannot be started until one or more of other activities are completed but immediately succeed them are called successor activities. Three, concurrent activity. And activities which can be accomplished concurrently are known as concurrent activities. It may be noted that an activity can be predecessor or a successor to an event or it may be concurrent with one or more of the other activities. This predecessor, successor, con concurrent, this thing, it is the same as we have discussed earlier in this previous slides. Finish to start, start to finish is the same, almost same. Fourth, dummy activity. An activity which does not consume any kind of resource but merely depicts the technological dependence is called a dummy activity. The dummy activity is inserted in the network to clarify the activity pattern in the following two situations. To make activities with common starting and finishing points distinguishable, to identify and maintain the proper predecessor relationship between activities that is not connected by events. For example, you consider a situation, look at the figure also when I say it. For example, consider a situation where A and B are concurrent activities. C is dependent on A. And D is dependent on A and B both. Such a situation can be handled by using a dummy activity as shown in the figure. So that's all for this lecture. You can give a name, enrollment ID in the chat box for your attendance and also at the same time we'll go through videos. Thank you. Uh, or like we said earlier, I only say substructure work, superstructure work. Just leave it at that. It's too abstract. This is one level of detail further. And however, so, so if you look, what on what basis is this broken down? What is, the, it's a component breakdown. 
So we have taken the various components of the bridge and tried to break it down as much by components. So once we put all these components together, we have the bridge. And generally in construction, that is a, 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 a kind of a, one of the most common ways and one of the, probably the, the easiest way to break down because components are physical. But a lot of times, say something like service, project management of a service, you cannot break it down by components. But in construction, yes, you can a lot of times break it down by component. But we have to realize that breaking down by component is still only one view. Doesn't give a, we might require other views of the project. For example, we might want uh, a view from different subcontractors. I might have, do, I mean, I mean, I have same subcontract, like con all of concreting could be one subcontract, which means the piling and the deck slab doesn't mean doesn't need different people. Or I, I want the concreting view to the project, not the component view to the project. So these are things that can uh, change views. And it's important to understand that these multiple views exist. And might be when we look at it from the level we are today, the component is easiest to look at. As you get into more uh, complex situations with multiple teams looking at different aspects, you'll find that there are views which you can't even see, which others need it in that perspective to be able to to uh, manage the project. Coming back to this uh, issue of detail. Remember, we talked about uh, schedule levels, level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5. So the detail you do also may depends on the level of the schedule which you're working on. And sometimes when you are in the, uh, in the, in the beginning and the higher levels, you, you, there's no meaning in going into too much detail. Okay, other questions or points? Okay, so here we raise this question. It's, it's a common question. What is the level of detail required? So we would say level of detail required to plan is basically it's a plan, communicate, monitor, control the project given the type of project, scope, package, deliverables, and duration. Okay, so for example, another very important thing is the level of detail is duration. I am, I am in a shutdown retrofit project where, let us say you have a power plant and the boiler is shut down for you to do maintenance. So in this case, the boiler can be shut down only for a few days. And it is critical that the boiler comes back up and the power plant starts generating again. What is your what is the detail you will go to from a duration perspective? It will be an hourly or even a half hourly duration. When your activities have to be at that level of detail. As opposed to I'm on a project which is going to take four or five years to complete. Yeah, it can be weeks, months. Because that's the level I'm controlling. So the control depends on also the, the time scale and what is your deliverable from the project. Okay. The uh, second question, you know, what activity should be considered? Like we have said, WBS should be comprehensive. There should be no gaps in the job logic. Logic doesn't necessarily mean sequence. It means that once I've completed all the elements of the WBS, my job should be fully complete. All activities of my job should be accounted for. So when you talked about project management being a part, this was something that used to be missed. People wouldn't put project management in the WBS because it was not a, what do you call it? It was not a component or something like that. No drawings were coming out of project management. You know, there were plans, but it's not a component. But there's a lot of money spent on project. There are resources on project. So we should make sure that, there's, that all parts of the job are taken care of when we do this WBS. And when we decompose a WBS, at each level, 100% of the work applicable to the next higher level is met. So these, so these are some of the basic rules. But still, we'll find that, that when you start trying to break a project into its activities, into its elements, and organize it in the form of a work breakdown structure, it's not that easy for everyone to see the same perspective, Okay, as we just experienced. Now, I have just put this uh, to show you. This is a question that is asked very commonly. What is the level of detail? And 
you know, there are guidelines such as this, which gives you a checklist to say, you know, you, you have to answer. So if you take a look at this, this list, should the work package be decomposed further, it says the greater the number of positive answers to the following question, the stronger the justification for breaking down the work package. See, the rule is not, it's not a very black and white rule, it's a gray rule. Okay, so it says greater, stronger justification. And that's the nature of the job. Okay, so you can see there are uh, there are a list of questions here. Okay, and that doesn't end there. There are quite a few questions, and once you can answer these questions, then you you probably have a justification or an answer to should I go into more detail on. And this is a question faced by professionals. Okay, so with a lot of experience, with a lot of uh, of uh, of planning knowledge.